Let's talk now about uh, another simple but uh, useful uh, frequently used contract in, in practice um, called swaps, uh, which is really nothing else but a series of uh, forward type contracts. So a uh, swap contract is an agreement between two parties to exchange two series of payments at pre-specified uh, times. Uh, and for example, uh, a classic swap is so-called uh, interest rate swap, uh, in which uh, one party pays fixed amounts, uh, typically computed as an interest on some uh, notional uh, amount, so say million dollars, which is never exchanged, it's just an amount used to, to compute the, the interest on. Uh, and the other party pays to the first party uh, random interest on the same amount. So, when would this be uh, inter of interest to, uh, let's say, the party which is uh, receiving random uh, fl or so-called floating interest and paying fixed interest? Uh, th this is, suppose you are a company or an individual that enters uh, a loan in which uh, you have to pay random interest, floating interest based on some market rate. Uh, and you don't like randomness, you would rather uh, know exactly how much you have to pay, say, every month, uh, instead of not knowing exactly having to pay a random amount. Uh, then uh, you can uh, go to an investment bank or an exchange, or you find a counterparty uh, and to enter a swap uh, in which uh, you pay the fixed rate on, on an amount, uh, fixed payments on a loan, uh, and they, for you, uh, pay uh, this uh, random amount that you were supposed to pay originally. Right? So you basically swap, you exchange uh, your random payments that originally you were supposed to pay for fixed payments, and now you're happy because you know exactly how much you will have to pay. Right? So that's a classic interest rate swap, uh, and this floating rate is, is often uh, a function of the so-called LIBOR rate, which is, stands for London Interbank Offer Rate, which is the rate uh, at which uh, banks uh, um, borrow and lend money from each other uh, at a short, short term, like overnight. Okay, so the, this is the definition of swaps. So there's a little bit of a theoretical puzzle uh, why swaps exist, because if everything is priced efficiently and fairly, then it shouldn't really matter for you whether you are paying a fixed interest or random interest if those interests are computed in an efficient and fair way. Um, well, uh, there are possible explanations, uh, uh, imperfections in the market in particular. Um, for example, the two parties may be exposed to different interest rates when they take a loan um, in different markets, or they may be under different uh, restrictions. Um, different regulations uh, and one can do more, one party can do things that the other party cannot do uh, and then it might be of interest for them to, to enter a swap. So here's an, an example. Uh, this was actually a real world example uh, uh, some years ago for a certain country in, in which new pension regulations were, were introduced that required a higher investment in fixed income securities by pension funds. Uh, so suddenly there was a new law that the pension funds had to have a, a larger portion of, of their investments in uh, fixed income instruments, uh, somewhat safer instruments, uh, as opposed to, let's say, stocks and equities. Uh, so this creates problems if uh, at the moment your stock holdings are maybe uh, low value and you would take losses if you sell them or you are really thinking long term uh, and you really you actually want these stocks uh, and you would rather not sell them so one way uh, if the regulations uh, still allow it uh, instead of selling uh, stocks that you, you that you own the uh, that the pension fund owns uh, they could enter a swap uh, in which they would exchange uh, profits or losses from stocks for fixed income returns okay so effectively it's as if they are holding bonds uh, or some other fixed income instruments uh, but they're not really they, they just swapped they still hold the stocks but they pay the the, the profits or losses from stocks they exchange them for profits or losses from some fixed income instruments. Okay? So if the regulations allow this in this way, 
uh, you are in fact in invested, uh, your returns are according a um, higher percentage uh, with respect to fixed income instruments, but you didn't actually sell those stocks. Okay? Uh, there is also a more exotic thing called uh, swaptions. Uh, if you if you want to have an option not not to exchange if you don't want to that's called a swaption it's an option to enter a swap um, uh, so but you know, that's that's already a more complicated derivative it's not a linear derivative and here is a kind of a typical example uh, which is offered as a, as a justification why why swaps might exist uh, it's called the swap uh, comparative advantage of entering a swap. Um, so we are going to imagine here that we have two firms. Uh, there is a lot of assumptions here which may not be completely realistic, but okay, uh, it will give you an idea why, why when a swap might be useful. So there's a U.S. firm called Firm B, uh, which wants to, to which uh, needs for some reasons to borrow Australian dollars, and there is a, a Australian firm A which uh, needs to borrow uh, American dollars. Uh, and suppose that the firm uh, B can borrow uh, US dollars at 5% rate and it can borrow Australian dollars at 12.6% interest. And the firm A, the Australian firm, the, uh, it can borrow US dollars at 7% and Australian dollars at 13%. Okay, so firm A actually has to pay higher interest in both markets. Um, that uh, might be completely realistic because um, if firm A uh, has a lower credit rating than firm B, typically it will have to, have to pay higher interest um, than a higher uh, rating firm. So the claim here is there is a swap or, or swaps uh, such that um, these firms could share a potential expected gain of this minus this plus this mi uh, minus this minus this. So 7 minus 5 minus 13 minus 12.6, which in this case is 2 minus 0.4%, um, so 1.6%. Yeah. So the, 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 the let's see whether we can construct at least one swap, it's going to be many, but one swap in which um, there is a profit of 1.6% that can be made in, in some sense. So here is the swap. Uh, it's a uh, and we are going to imagine here that there is a, an intermediary a bank because it might be hard for bank A and uh, firm A and firm B to find each other. We are going to imagine that uh, they actually go to an investment bank and they ask for a better deal uh, so that they can reduce the interest that they have to pay. Uh, and the bank uh, proposes the following two swaps. Yeah? So the, the bank proposes to, with f to firm B to pay in the swap uh, a rate of 5% on the nominal amount uh, in US dollars and to receive from firm B 11.9% uh, 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 on the nominal amount in Australian dollars. Uh, firm B, on the other hand, uh, remember they, they borrow uh, US dollars at 5%, which is exactly this 5% they are getting from the bank. Yeah? Uh, uh, similarly, the bank proposes to firm A to um, pay 13% uh, in Australian dollars and to receive in the swap in exchange for uh, receiving um, 6.3 in uh, US dollars. And firm A is taking a loan uh, at 13% in Australian dollars. Okay. So if we, if we look at this uh, from the perspective of, of the bank, um, the bank is gaining 1.3% on US dollars because it is, uh, let's just get rid of this, uh, it is uh, paying 5% uh, uh, but it's receiving 6.3% uh, uh, and the firm B, so the, the gain is positive, the gain is 0.2%. Uh, uh, firm B is also gaining in, uh, in, um, uh, in terms of Australian dollars, uh, originally they would have to pay in the market, if they just go directly to the market, they would have to pay 12.6% in Australian, but in this swap they are paying only 11.9%. Okay? So that's a gain of 0.7%. And similarly, firm A 
which was supposed to pay um, seven percent in US dollars if they go to the market uh, they're paying only six point three percent um, here so it's a gain of 0.7 percent so if you add up 1.3 and and, and uh, 0.7 and 0 0.7 uh, and that's this uh, par sorry 0 0.2 and 0.7 and 0 0.7 that's exactly this 1.6 percent that we claimed uh, would be the uh, the total profits to be shared okay. so is this like some kind of, of, of magic here well um, you know as I said there, there, there might be a reason why uh, why the numbers are exactly like like uh, we assume here uh, and the one reason in particular may be lower credit rating of firm A, which means that uh, firm A uh, is more likely to default than firm B. Okay? And we completely ignored here the, the danger of one of the parties going default. Uh, the, this is, of course, that there are these profits to be made if nobody goes default. However, uh, if uh, one of the firms or the bank uh, for that matter as we saw that can happen too in a few years ago in the crisis uh, if one of the parties goes default then the another party will not get their promised uh, payments and, and then these gains would be uh, lower than that in expected value uh, so so if you actually if you actually correct for the possibility of default and default probabilities um, then these, these gains should really disappear if the market is efficient. Uh, another swap example, uh, just uh, another possible use of a swap. Uh, suppose you are a charitable foundation and you receive um, some amount in stock from a, from a donor for a privately owned firm, for example, from the owner of a privately owned firm. Uh, and. Uh, but th this gift uh, is given under the condition that you cannot sell that stock. Okay? You have to hold it, you have to keep it, uh, to, to keep the firm owners happy. Um, well, if the firm owners are not sophisticated enough, maybe they will be happy enough if you hold the stock, but you, you do enter a, a swap that exchanges the profits and losses from that stock, with something which is better for your portfolio. Okay? Maybe they don't care if you enter some swaps, so they just want you to keep those stocks on, on the books. So you could uh, enter a, a so-called equity swap, um, which, uh, which we mentioned before with the pension fund. Uh, well, not quite, it was a different one. Um, here you, you, you would, for example, uh, swap the, the returns or losses that you get from receive uh, on the stock of this private uh, firm uh, in return for uh, profits and losses on, on a same type of investment today on uh, let's say S&P 500 index, some kind of diversified uh, investment uh, which would be an index of stocks like S&P 500. Uh, so you know that would make your holdings much more diversified uh, and much less risky. Uh, of course, it, it can always happen that um, uh, this was not a good thing to do uh, uh, if, uh, in, uh, in hindsight. Uh, it could happen that the index actually goes down and, and the private this single stock goes up, in, in which case uh, you will have to, you know, in this swap you will have to um, pay a lot. You would be losing a lot in the, on the, in the swap because you would be receiving little and having to pay a lot. And the final example with, with the swaps. Um, Executive compensation. Uh, you these days executives uh, often receive, as part of their compensation, uh, stock of, of their company, and they are usually not not allowed uh, to sell this stock, at least not for a while. Uh, so your your portfolio now suddenly has this big uh, uh, big chunk which is not diversified, which is stock of your own company. Uh, now this example maybe was more appropriate in the past, uh, now companies will probably not allow you to do a swap, but if you were allowed as the executive to do, you could, you know, you could swap again um, this particular returns of this uh, on, the st on the stock of your company uh, for the returns on uh, maybe an index uh, to, to make your portfolio more di diversified. Um, so uh, again, this may not really be possible in most of the cases, but if it is possible as an executive, you might want to do this.